Hi everyone, this is video 4 of the Chemistry of Life series. This one is going to be on chemical reactions and enzymes. The goal here is to explain the role of enzymes as catalysts that lower the activation energy of biological chem biochemical reactions and also to identify factors such as pH and temperature and how those factors affect enzyme activity. So we're going to start talking about energy in reactions and this is all about how reactions occur in our bodies and the kinds of energy or, or really with enzymes and how they affect this energy. So the first thing I want you to know is that whenever chemical bonds are broken or formed, just like in this chemical reaction here, such as carbon dioxide plus water gives you H2CO3, that's a chemical reaction. We're forming bonds or we're breaking bonds. This always requires energy. Energy is either released or absorbed. Okay, um, And so this is how chemical reactions work. That's basic chemistry. Now all chemical re reactions require an amount of energy to start the reaction and this is called activation energy. So if you were to, this is a interesting reaction because you can go back and forth. You can tell it go to go one way or the other over and over again all you want. And sometimes chemical reactions happen like that, but you can't do that constantly because there's a little bit of energy required to go either way. So there's always going to be less energy created than there was um, uh, used. And so it requires energy to make these reactions happen. Um, and so this is how our body works. Sometimes chemical reactions happen in our body in milliseconds um, and it's just how things work and we have to have the, all this functioning at an optimal level in order for us to be healthy this is called metabolism metabolism is basically the collection of all the chemical reactions that are occurring in any physical body uh, any biological living thing and um, they have to happen you know uh, correctly or else the 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 organism is going to suffer chemical reactions that release energy often occur on their own uh, they can happen spontaneously um, that doesn't mean they don't need activation energy but they don't need any extra energy to go into them they've got the energy they're ready to go they just gotta have a little bit of push from the activation energy to get them started and then boom they happen all by themselves chemical reactions that absorb energy you can imagine them going the opposite direction uh, in this particular picture um, you have to put energy into it to make it happen. Um, you can see here that if I started here with this reactant, uh, it would take a little bit of energy to get it started, but then I am going to produce more energy than I've used, right? But if I went the other direction, in order to go from H2CO3 back to here, I've actually got to add energy into the reaction, okay? And so, um, and keep in mind, both times those reactions require activation energy, but um, if, 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 the, if the reaction is absorbing energy, then it requires it to have an energy source. A lot of times that's heat, sometimes that can be sunlight, sometimes that can be uh, uh, another chemical reaction, um, heck, sometimes it can even be electricity, but it does often go, you know, it does require that if, you, if energy goes into the reaction, you gotta have energy available for it to happen. Energy changes are one of the most important factors in determine whether a chemical reaction will occur. Did the, is there energy there is, is energy there to change it, okay? One thing I like, well, you know, we're gonna do that on the next slide, okay? Now, energy sources, in order to stay alive, organisms need to carry out reactions that require energy. This is called metabolism. Plants absorb energy from the sunlight. Animals eat the plants. Now, you know, to start with, that plant is absorbing energy for itself. It is trying to gather as much energy as it can so that it can grow and develop and then reproduce and produce a new generation. That's what this plant is trying to do. This rabbit comes along and ruins that plant's day by instead of allowing the plant to develop fully, instead the rabbit takes the energy from that plant and uses it for all of its metabolic energy sources or needs. Um, and so in many ways this rabbit is not in the plans of this plant on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, but it's good for the rabbit, it's not good for the plant. Okay, uh, and then of course the next level is here comes the fox, and the fox is what eating the rabbit, and it's getting the energy from the rabbit, and um, this is a very simple food chain, but this is how every th living thing on Earth gets its energy from metabolism. Plants absorb it from the sun, and then things eat the plants, or the things eat the things that eat the plants, etc. And um, you fall into this category. You're either here at the rabbit level, or at the fox level, or there's even levels past that. But the point I'm trying to make is, is this is where energy comes from. Every time uh, this process of taking sunlight energy and turning it into uh, 
energy for the plant is a chemical reaction. When this rabbit is eating this plant, it is digesting it, which is a chemical reaction. And then the energy is being moved around the body of the, of the animal um, for chemical reactions to occur. So it's just all about chemical reactions over and over again. And that energy, um, by the way, always comes from sunlight. So even the energy this fox is using came from the rabbit, which came from the plant, which came from the sun. So something to keep in mind. Enzymes are crucial in making these chemical reactions happen. I'd like for you to notice back on this particular picture here, there's two lines. There's a red line and a blue line. The red line is how much energy it would take for the uh, reaction to occur without an enzyme. The blue line is how much energy it takes with the enzyme. The enzyme makes it happen easier. It makes it happen faster. And this may not seem like a lot to you, but when you're talking about thousands and thousands per second per cell, this energy tends to add up. And it's just a pretty simple rule. Without these enzymes doing what they do, we wouldn't be able to have life on Earth. Um, the enzymes make it happen easier and therefore it is more efficient, therefore we can have complex life on Earth. In fact, we can have all life on Earth, right? Um, a catalyst is a type of enzyme. Now, enzymes are proteins, they do lots of things, but a catalyst is a type of enzyme that speeds up the rate of a chemical reaction, um, and they basically work by lowering the reaction's activation energy. Now, here's a way to look at this. Imagine this picture right here without the blue um, enzyme substrate complex. Imagine that weren't in the picture. I've got two substrates here. I got to get them together to make the product. Could we do that? Absolutely. They could. Uh, they could go together and finally form together to make the product. It would take a lot of energy to make that happen. But this enzyme kind of puts them together itself. So the enzyme comes along, grabs it, both of them, sticks them together, and creates the product. Um, and as a result that chemical reaction happened a lot more quickly. This chemical, re this is really a chemical reaction. These two things are called reactants. They go together to create the product. So this reactant and this reactant need to go together to create this product. It can happen by itself. The enzyme makes it happen much easier. By the way, this can happen in the reverse. The enzyme can do the opposite. The enzyme can take this substrate and split it in half which would be, it could do by itself, but it's a whole lot easier to do it with an enzyme, and then you have this product over here. So it does, enzymes are kind of like cut and paste. They can cut things in half or they can paste things together, okay? And this happens in every cell in your body thousands of times per second. It is uncountable how much is happening in your body right now, but this is basically how you live is the process of this happening, okay? Your body either needs things broken in half so they can use them, or it needs things formed together so they can use them, and this is what enzymes do. Now, there are things that can have an effect on whether or not enzymes work well. Temperature is one, pH is another. Remember, we just studied pH. Well, if the pH isn't just right in your blood or in the tissues in your body or whatever organism we're talking about, then the um, enzymes, which are just proteins, have trouble forming into the right shape. And if they're not in the right shape, then they can't function. And so the pH has an awful lot to do with the activity of the enzymes. Additionally, um, and I'm saving temperature for last, but there are, there are molecules that our body releases that also control how these enzymes work by sometimes wrapping around them and keeping them from functioning, or sometimes actually enhancing them in other ways by enhancing their structure. But one of the big things is temperature. Enzymes produced by human cells generally work best at a temperature of around 37 degrees Celsius. I wonder why that happens. Well, guess what body temperature we normally have is around 37. Actually a little bit lower than that, around 36. So this would represent a body that's kind of a little bit warmer than normal, but a little bit warmer than normal is where our body should be. Okay, whether it's through physical exercise in which our body's working better and stronger, or if you're sick and you get a fever and your body temperature goes up a little bit, it makes these enzymes work better, and that has a lot to do with your, um, in that particular case, it has a lot to do with your immune system. But as your body works, your body works better at a certain temperature. If the temperature goes too high, 39, 40 degrees, it actually causes these to not work very well at all, and it can cause you to die. If it gets too low, the same problem, they don't work very well. So there's kind of a range of temperatures, and all living things have this range of temperatures. And if the temperature outside changes, and the <coughs> if the temperature outside changes, it affects the temperature on the inside and the enzymatic function. But if you're a warm-blooded animal, you can control that temperature inside better, so the enzymes work better. Um, Anyway, and that's just three things, temperature, pH, these uh, other molecules. There's all kinds of things that can affect the, uh, the, the activity of, a P, of an enzyme. And so enzymes are highly affected by outside sources. And that's going to wrap it up. I just needed you to know that, a little bit about how energy is used in the body 
and then um, a little bit about what enzymes do at a very basic level enzymes um, they make chemical reactions happen with less energy they make chemical reactions happen more efficiently and since we go through literally billions of chemical reactions per second in our body then the amount of energy we saved is compounded by billions of times per second and it's just about the only way that we can have life on earth is through enzymatic activity okay that wraps up chemistry of life that's everything we need to talk about and so I'm gonna stop it here uh, be sure to look for the next round of videos um, then they will be released soon thank you very much